Man, it's been 31 years. Anyway, it was uh, January 16th, 10 p.m., Anderson Barracks, Dixheim, Germany, Echo Company, 12th Engineers, 8th Infantry Division. Uh, we got called on alert, went down to the motor pool with our war packs, and obviously we knew we weren't going because <laughs> we had already been over there, but uh, uh, they set us up for, you know, <clears throat> 24-hour guard duty, which was basically, if you were the platoon, during the 24 hours, you were, you know, roving front gate or back gate for four hours without ammo, which was amazing. But, uh, I mean, we were at Threat Con, Charlie. And um, otherwise, we, you'd go back to, uh, we stayed at the infirmary in Cots and kind of slept on our four hours off and then got back up and, you know, did the four hours. I can't complain because, you know, I wasn't over in the desert. So, anyway, it's... Uh, Day I'll never forget, and, you know, I thank all the guys that were over there fighting, all the men and women, and, you know, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. Um, I think the Coast Guard was over there, too, so hats off to you guys. And I remember sitting in the barracks uh, watching uh, all this unfold on a 13-inch TV, you know, on headline news on AFN. It was uh, pretty amazing for the time, so anyway, check this out, guys. Center of the runway is the end point. This is where the uh, laser designator is pointed. This is taken at night with infrared sensors. And there the bomb goes off in the center of the runway. And heat shows up as white. And now you'll see the uh, pilot switch to higher magnification and uh, as he flies away from the target. This is the smoke plume from the bomb, and there's the crater. The next one is a SCUD storage uh, building in uh, Kuwait, and keep your eye on the uh, entrance to the storage. Again, the uh, pilot has released his bombs about two miles away. He's banking away from the target, leaving the target area, lazing the target, and you'll see two bombs fly into the door of the uh, storage bunker. You can almost get airsick watching this. And you'll be able to count each bomb. One, two. Those are 2,000 pound bombs. This is the uh, air defense headquarters in the vicinity of Baghdad. These are air shafts that uh, provide uh, best access into this concrete structure. And keep your eye on the front door, the airlock door, as the debris comes out the door from the bomb going in this lead in uh, air shaft. There it goes in, and here comes the debris. This is another air defense sector over in the western part of Iraq. It's already been struck by 117. This is a team effort. The second aircraft comes through, and this part of the building here provides some constructural weakness that will be exploited in this attack, and the bomb will hit in uh, this area here. And this is my counterpart's headquarters in uh, Baghdad. <laughs> this is the air, uh, headquarters of the Air Force, and keep your eye on all sides of the building as the airplane overflies the building and drops the bomb down through the center of the building. Those pictures were videotaped by cameras mounted on the Air Force F-111s and F-117 stealth fighters. And CNN has this, Justin. CNN Jerusalem reports that air raid sirens briefly sounded in Jerusalem, but have now stopped. Sirens have not been heard in Tel Aviv. As of right now, there is no sign of attack. I repeat, no sign of attack. CNN is investigating the source of the sirens. And coming up, we'll be hearing from CNN's Bernard Shaw and John Holloman just back this evening from Baghdad. Go ahead, Bernie. I'm just crouching down here on the floor to uh, get a better point of observation. The sky over Baghdad is black. You can hear an occasional truck or car go by, but you wouldn't know that there's life outside these windows. We no longer see tracer bullets. We can tell that uh, there are fires off in the distance. It is eerily quiet right now. There's a very cool breeze blowing through the window here. 
and uh, we are sweating in more ways than one. Uh, Peter Arnett is here, John Holloman is here. Uh, you know, it occurs to me I didn't get dinner tonight. <laughs> Come a suicide in his bunker, but I think he could try his best to escape because Saddam basically is a coward at heart. So you think there would be no chance of him surrendering to the Allied forces? No way, because he doesn't want to be tied up in chains and taken to court. And I mean, his ego wouldn't permit him to do so. Thank you very much. Thank you. One view from here in Saudi Arabia in the very, very early hours of this campaign, which started uh, approximately six hours ago here in Saudi Arabia. So far, the early reports militarily we're receiving is that at least the first flight of planes returned, U.S. and Saudi planes, without any casualties. We'll have to, that is from one Saudi official. We'll have to wait and see if that shows out to be true. Charles Jaco, CNN, reporting live from Saudi Arabia. Thanks, Charles. Well, it's just eight minutes after six in the morning in Iraq. Dawn is not yet arrived. For three hours, U.S.-led forces in the Gulf have been bombarding Iraqi strategic targets in a massive and coordinated airstrike. After a tense five-month standoff, war has come to the Gulf. One hour ago, President Bush addressed the nation and the world to explain what is happening and why. Our objectives are clear. Saddam Hussein's forces will leave Kuwait. The legitimate government of Kuwait will be restored to its rightful place, and Kuwait will once again be free. Iraq will eventually comply with all relevant United Nations resolutions, and then, when peace is restored, it is our hope that Iraq will live as a peaceful and cooperative member of the family of nations, thus enhancing the security and stability of the Gulf. Some may ask, why act now? Why not wait? The answer is clear. The world could wait no longer. Sanctions, though having some effect, showed no signs of accomplishing their objective. Sanctions were tried for well over five months, and we and our allies concluded that sanctions alone would not force Saddam from Kuwait. While the world waited, Saddam Hussein systematically raped, pillaged, and plundered a tiny nation. No threat to his own. He subjected the people of Kuwait to unspeakable atrocities. And among those maimed and murdered, innocent children. While the world waited, Saddam sought to add to the chemical weapons arsenal he now possesses an infinitely more dangerous weapon of mass destruction a nuclear weapon. And while the world waited, while the world talked peace and withdrawal, Saddam Hussein dug in and moved massive forces into Kuwait. While the world waited, while Saddam stalled, more damage was being done to the fragile economies of the third world, the emerging democracies of Eastern Europe, to the entire world, including to our own economy. The United States, together with the United Nations, exhausted every means at our disposal to bring this crisis to a peaceful end. However, Saddam clearly felt that by stalling and threatening and defying the United Nations, he could weaken the forces arrayed against him. President Bush says his objective is not the conquest of Iraq, but the liberation of Kuwait. He adds he hopes to bring home the U.S. troops in the Gulf region as soon as possible. Have you noticed that as everything around you seems to decline, one thing still grows? It is the power of your rulers. None of their plans and directives have solved your problems or made your life better. The only result has been their increased control over you at the cost of your freedom. Do you know why? You gave them the power.